Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we're taking a look at how Intel's new 12th gen core series performs using Windows 10. And I'll be comparing that data to Windows 11 with and without virtualization based security or VBS for short. Now I did briefly touch on Windows 10 versus Windows 11 performance in my Core i9 at 12900K review, but it was only very brief and as such it was difficult to draw any solid conclusions. This time though we are going much more in depth on the testing and the inclusion of VBS enabled results is also quite important as this is how some systems come configured and it's thought that since Intel did all their benchmarking with VBS enabled, perhaps it doesn't impact the newer architecture to quite the same degree it did with the 10th and 11th gen parts. Personally, I don't feel as though VBS is a security feature that gamers will want to enable or really need to enable, but how secure you want your gaming system to be is really up to you. If the performance hit is only a few percent, it's probably worth it, but that wasn't always the case when testing the 10th and 11th gen core series processors, which often saw gaming performance tank by 10% or more. It's also well worth noting that, at least based on our experience so far, that for the most part, enthusiast built systems, so that is to say custom built PCs using motherboards from the likes of ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte, or ASRock, they shouldn't have VBS enabled by default, despite what Microsoft have told us. Again, this could just be because we've tested with early biases. Not sure at this point in time, it is hard to say, but it looks like at least based on the information we have so far through our own internal testing, that if you've built your own PC or purchased a pre-built using parts from the likes of say ASUS, for example, then chances are that when you install Windows 11, a fresh install that is, VBS won't be enabled. That being the case, for us it does make the most sense to test Windows 11 with VBS disabled, as at least based on the information we have so far, we believe that will be the situation for the majority of our audience. But of course, we're also just as interested to see how out of late performance with a VBS enabled versus without VBS. We also feel if you're building a new PC from the ground up, or even just upgrading your platform, so motherboard and CPU, we suggest a fresh install of Windows. And if you're going to bother doing that, we recommend doing so with Windows 11, which is why we spent two weeks updating all of our CPU data on Windows 11. I know there's a lot of discussion around how well Windows 11 works, which is the standard thing we see when Microsoft releases a new operating system. But personally, I've not had any bad experiences after several fresh installs on numerous test systems. So given that the Windows 10 upgrade process to Windows 11 isn't that good, as it does hurt performance and can introduce stability issues, we strongly recommend a fresh install. So if you're going to do that, I feel it makes little sense to install Windows 10, only to upgrade to Windows 11 in the near future, assuming you're not one of those crazies that's still running Windows 7. Relax, I'm only half joking. But yeah, you are still kind of crazy, so maybe just own it. Anyway, that's why we've now moved to Windows 11 for all future testing of AMD and Intel CPUs. There are a few other things I'd like to address, such as software compatibility with 12th gen, but I'll do that towards the end of the video. For now, let's quickly go over the test system specs and then we'll get into all the blue bar graphs. Once again, for all the 12th gen testing, I'll be sticking with DDR4 3200CL14 memory by using the MSI Z690 Tomahawk Wi-Fi DDR4. But I've also included the Ryzen 7 5800X Windows 11 results, just for reference. I've mostly grayed out the data in the graphs because it really is just a reference point and the data isn't that valid, let's say, for this comparison. So just a rough reference point. And the Ryzen test system uses the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Dark Hero motherboard with the latest BIOS update. And of course, all of the test systems are running the latest Windows updates and drivers. And on a final note, we are using the AMD Radeon RX 6900 XT graphics card for all of our gaming and application benchmarks. All right, let's get into it. Starting with the Cinebench R23 multi-core results, we see that the difference between Windows 10 and 11 is virtually non-existent with both operating systems able to maximize the performance of Intel's new Core i7 processor. That said, we do see around a 5% drop in performance here with VBS enabled. So not a massive difference, but it is well worth being aware of. And we're also seeing a similar thing for the single core performance. Windows 10 and Windows 11 are much the same here, but enabling VBS on Windows 11 does reduce performance by 5%. The 7-zip file manager compression performance is again very similar between Windows 10 and Windows 11 with both operating systems running with VBS disabled. However, enabling VBS did reduce Windows 11 performance with the 12700KF by 10% and that is quite a significant margin. And here we're seeing that VBS wasn't quite as detrimental to performance when it came to decompression work, but even so here we're still looking at a 7% reduction. 
Outside of that though, Windows 10 and Windows 11 were much the same. We're looking at a similar thing with the Corona benchmark, though overall here Windows 11 without VBS enabled did produce the best result, beating Windows 10 by a 5% margin. This time enabling VBS reduced performance by 8%, which is getting up there and becoming somewhat noticeable. Interestingly, the Adobe Premiere Pro 2021 results between Windows 10 and Windows 11 running VBS were virtually identical, and that made Windows 11 without VBS 5% faster than Windows 10. Not a massive difference there, but the newer operating system did deliver the best results. Windows 11 was also superior for the Adobe Photoshop 2022 test, beating the previous operating system by a 4% margin. That said, VBS reduced performance by 7%, making Windows 11 slower than Windows 10. And we have yet another example with Adobe After Effects 2022, where Windows 11 is faster than Windows 10, this time by a 4% margin. And this time, VBS only reduced performance by 3%, which is obviously insignificant. And here we see that Windows 11 provided the best results in the Factorio benchmark, beating the previous Windows version by 7%. It was also faster than Windows 10 with VBS enabled, which reduced performance by 4%. So overall, a very good result here for Microsoft's latest operating system. We're looking at a 4% performance improvement for code compilation work using Windows 11 over 10, though enabling VBS did reduce performance here by 6%. So not a massive margin in this one, but the performance trends are similar to the other application benchmarks. And the last application benchmark we have here is Blender Open Data. And for this one, we find that Windows 10 and 11 produce the exact same result, a completion time of 636 seconds. Enabling VBS did slow Windows 11 down to the tune of 4%, so again, not significant, but it does make Windows 11 appear slower than Windows 10, when in fact it's actually not. Now this is really interesting to note. Power usage between Windows 10 and 11 was identical, which makes sense given performance was also identical. However, despite slightly reducing performance, VBS didn't reduce power consumption, at least not in this example. So VBS enabled Windows 11 will provide worse efficiency data when compared to Windows 10. Okay, time for the gaming results. And as usual, the game data is rather mixed and we're gonna start with F1 2021. Here, Windows 10 provided the best results beating Windows 11, though only by a 3% margin, seen when comparing the 1% low data. However, Enabling VBS did tank performance, reducing the 1% lows by up to 14%, which is a massive frame rate decline and something gamers really should be made well aware of. The Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege results using the Vulkan API are very interesting. Here Windows 11 is up to 14% faster than Windows 10. And we saw previously a 5% uplift with Ryzen, but 14% here with the 12700KF is massive. It is also interesting to note that with VBS enabled, Windows 10 and Windows 11 delivered virtually the same level of performance. The Borderlands 3 results are a lot less interesting here as Windows 10 and 11 are much the same. That said, enabling VBS did reduce Windows 11 performance by up to 11%, seeing when looking at the 1% low data. So these results overall are pretty much what I would expect to see as more of the norm, let's say. Moving on to Watch Dogs Legion. Here the data is, well, really quite shocking. In fact, it's so shocking that I went back and retested just to be sure. So here we see that Windows 10 and 11 are really much the same, just as we saw on Borderlands 3. However, with VBS enabled, Windows 11 performance just falls off a cliff, dropping the average frame rate by 14%, which alone that's a very big figure, but the 1% low dropped by an incredible 29%. And we've heard reports of VBS destroying gaming performance by up to 30%, and here we have an actual example of that. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy is really more of the same, at least when comparing the VBS disabled results, as here Windows 11 and 10 are virtually the same. But again, enabling VBS really does hurt the gaming performance of Windows 11, and while we're only looking at a 5% reduction to the average frame rate, the 1% low dropped by a staggering 18%. Not as extreme as Watch Dogs Legion, but it is still very significant. Shadow of the Tomb Raider played slightly better on Windows 10, which is kind of humorous given that it is listed as one of the games that have DRM issues on Windows 10, and therefore should either crash or not load, but we had no problems at all using Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Whether it was the built-in benchmark or just playing the game, uh, it seemed to work just fine. So not sure what the issues are there. Maybe it is very hardware specific. We're only talking about a 2.5% improvement here for Windows 10. So yeah, it did 
play slightly better on Windows 10, but not to the degree that you're actually going to notice. Anyway, the margin was small, but what we did find that was enabling VBS reduced performance by 5 to 6%, which is really quite a small margin and probably not worth worrying about, at least in this example. Performance in Hitman 3 was again much the same between Windows 10 and 11, but with VBS enabled, we're again looking at up to an 11% frame rate reduction, again, seeing we're looking at the 1% low. Age of Empires 4 provides us with what looks to be another typical looking set of results, and that being comparable performance between Windows 10 and 11. Then with VBS enabled, we see that the Windows 11 configuration dropped a considerable amount of performance, this time a 17% reduction for the 1% low, and then a much less extreme 7% hit to the average frame rate. Now these results are very peculiar. Horizon Zero Dawn sees Windows 10 outperform Windows 11 by a 7% margin, seen when looking at either the average frame rate or 1% low. And this is the first example we have of this. Enabling VBS did drop the 1% low performance by a further 7%, though the average frame rate was only reduced by 1.5%. Either way though, this is an unusually weak showing for Windows 11. Finally, we have Cyberpunk 2077, and here Windows 10 and 11 were much the same. However, Enabling VBS destroyed the 1% low performance in this title. I'm not entirely sure why, but the results were highly repeatable. Despite only seeing a 5% hit to the average frame rate, the 1% low was crippled by almost 30%. So that is similar to what was seen in Watch Dogs Legion. So while extreme and somewhat unexpected, it's not an outlier as we did see another example of this in another CPU demanding title. Now, here we're seeing that for the 10 game average, Windows 10 and 11 are much of a muchness with no more than a frame or two separating them. However, if we were to exclusively test Windows 11 with VBS enabled, the conclusion would be quite different. Here, Windows 11 ends up being 7% slower than Windows 10 when comparing the average frame rate, and a massive 15% slower when looking at the 1% low data. And this places Microsoft's latest operating system in a rather poor light, which is a shame, as both Windows 11 and 10 are capable of running with or without VBS enabled. Okay, so there's quite a few things to unpack here, so I'll do my best to break everything down while doing so in some kind of order that makes sense. Now let's start with this simple one. How should reviewers have tested the 12th Gen Core series with Windows 10 or Windows 11? The answer to this one is pretty simple. Doesn't really matter. As long as the same operating system was used for all the hardware configurations and then the same OS configuration was used for all the testing. Mixing operating systems in the same review could lead to very inaccurate data, especially if the security features differed. For the reasons I outlined earlier, I think the best course of action was to update everything to Windows 11, but I also fully acknowledge that there is no right or wrong option here, as long as everything was apples to apples on the software side. The next point of contention will no doubt be, should Windows 11 be tested with or without VBS enabled? Personally, we're going to test with VBS disabled, unless specified otherwise, and so far that has been the default configuration for all of our fresh installs. Interestingly, Microsoft states that the default behavior is to enable VBS for Windows 11 on systems that support the feature, but again, that hasn't been the case in any of our Z690 test systems that we've installed it on. Those systems do support VBS and it can be toggled on or off without changing anything in the BIOS, yet by default Windows 11 didn't enable it. Apparently all you need for VBS to be enabled by default is an Intel 11th gen CPU or better, or an AMD Zen 2 CPU or better, 8GB of RAM or more, a 64GB SSD or bigger, and a virtualization enabled in the BIOS. And our test systems met this criteria, but despite that VBS still wasn't enabled by default. Again, perhaps this is due to an early beta BIOS that we were using for testing. I'm not sure on that one. We'll have to look into this further with some more Z690 motherboards. Regardless though, comparing Windows 10 to 11, while only one of them uses VBS, it isn't a balanced comparison, especially when both operating systems are capable of enabling this feature. And again, I should point out that VBS isn't a new feature to Windows 11. It was supported by Windows 10. It just wasn't enabled by default, or at least Microsoft wasn't claiming that. And you know, it certainly wasn't because we never came across it. In this video, I've clearly shown the performance impact VBS can have, at least on our hardware configuration. Though I'm also aware that in some instances, particularly those surrounding gaming, the impact could be amplified due to the way we're testing, given that I'm using an extremely high-end GPU at a low resolution, which makes the game much more CPU bound than it would be under 
more normal conditions, let's say. So that means, you know, a slower GPU at a higher resolution. But of course, this is the best way to highlight CPU performance and the data is accurate. But it does mean under more GPU limited test conditions, VBS might only reduce performance by around 5%, which is fairly negligible. So I think for testing, the best practice would be to disable VBS, but whether or not gamers should do this is probably best for them to decide. Personally, I'll disable VBS on my gaming system, but I'd probably run with it enabled on my work PC as I'm willing to take a performance hit there for improved security. Now, when it comes to choosing between these two operating systems for new Intel 12th gen owners, especially those who are gamers, another factor is compatibility. Something Tim and myself discussed in a recent Q&A leading up to the release of these new CPUs was an issue Intel faced with DeNovo's Digital Rights Management or DRM software. In short, the DRM software doesn't recognize what these new hybrid CPUs are, given that it was developed prior to their release, and therefore it can cause games to crash or even fail to load at all. Now, it is well worth pointing out that Intel made the tech media aware of this issue prior to the release, so it shouldn't have been a surprise. Also, Intel's already addressed the problem for a huge number of games, and there are workarounds for those that remain. And this sort of teething issue with a brand new architecture is par for the course really, but sadly so is blowing it massively out of proportion by some in the media and diehard fans of certain corporations. Anyway, Intel is still actively working to address any issues with the remaining games and should have them patched up by mid-November for Windows 11 users. There's still just shy of 30 games that have compatibility issues when running with Windows 10, and the ETA for those to be addressed could be pushed out till next year. So not sure on that one, probably a bit more of a delay there for Windows 10. That said, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, that's on the list, and we've not had a single issue running or playing the game on Windows 10, so it could be very hardware specific. As for jumping all over Intel for this, again, we're not interested in doing that. These are the typical teething issues and stuff that early adopters should be accustomed to. That said, if by early next year this is still a problem, then you can expect us to give Intel a hard time about it. But really, this situation isn't that dissimilar to the NVIDIA POSCAP drama that turned out to be mostly BS, it was just a simple driver bug, or the huge drama surrounding AMD's AGISA code that saw some motherboards not hitting the advertised boost clocks, which often resulted in minuscule performance losses. In this example though, Intel might actually be doing all gamers a favour as some developers have simply opted to remove DRM from their game, and frankly that's what they should all do, as stuff like DeNovo is cancer upon gamers. Games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider that are now three years old and sell for around $10 don't need DRM bogging them down. Anyway, fingers crossed Intel gets this sorted quickly, so it'll just end up being a big deal out of nothing. And that is going to do it for this look at Windows 10 versus Windows 11 performance using the 12th gen core series. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. You can also subscribe for more content. We have a few more interesting Windows 11 videos coming up and then a whole heap of 12th gen benchmarking, looking at things like cache, how does that affect performance, uh, CPU and GPU scaling, big gaming benchmarks, DDR4 versus DDR5, lots of cool stuff in the works, so make sure you are subscribed for that. Also, if you'd like to support the channel and get some really awesome perks in return, we have Floatplane and Patreon, links for those are in the video description. You get access to our private Discord server, we do a monthly live stream for Harbour and Box community members, behind the scenes content, Q&A, a lot of cool stuff there, so if you're interested, check it out. If not, that is perfectly fine, and I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time. Thank you.